DirecTV Stream is a live TV streaming service with a cable-like look and feel. Today, I'll walk you through the basics. This is the ultimate beginner's guide to DirecTV Stream. In this video, you'll learn how to navigate DirecTV Stream's live guide, home screen, and the library, which is where you access your DVR. For this training, you'll need a DirecTV Stream account. Sign up directly on DirecTV Stream's website using the link in the description. And this is important. You want to sign up for DirecTV Stream online, not by phone. Because at recording time, the service offers unlimited cloud DVR storage only to people who sign up over the internet. To get started, you'll also need other streaming basics, a TV set, an internet connection, and a supported streaming device. I'll be using a Roku Ultra for this tutorial, but this training will still be useful if you're using another device to stream, including the optional DirecTV Stream device, which I cover in a separate video. Let's begin. Signing in to DirecTV Stream. There are several ways to access DirecTV Stream. A web browser, the mobile app, and your TV set. From your TV set, which is what I'm going to focus on in today's video, search for the DirecTV app if it's not already installed. When you load the app for the first time, you'll need to sign in. Use the same username and password that you created when you subscribed on DirecTV Stream's website. And if you have a Roku with a microphone, speaking your username and password may save you a bit of time. DirecTV Stream Navigation Basics When you first open the DirecTV Stream app, it'll pick up with the channel where you left off. If you click down on your Roku remote, the primary navigation appears. And there are a few main sections for you to browse. Guide, Watch Now, Library, Sports, and On Demand. Live Guide. This is the DirecTV Stream Live Guide from a TV set. As I scroll through the channels, notice the description at the top of the screen changes along with it. Select OK on any program airing right now and you're taken directly to it. But to preview content that's coming up later on, you have a few options. Scroll to the right using the arrow key on your remote. Select the channel logo for a specific network and see what's coming up for that network only. Or use the Jump Today feature to preview content up to two weeks in advance. When you select an upcoming program, you will see an option to record it and add it to your DVR. And I'm going to talk more about recordings in just a moment. DirecTV Stream's Live Guide gives you the option to view channels in A to Z order or by channel number. If you've got a Roku like me, alphabetical order makes the most sense. But if you paid for the optional DirecTV Stream device, there is a number pad with that device's remote, so in that case, you may want to sort by channel number. I'm back on my Roku with the alphabetical view. You see the option to favorite a channel. Long hold the OK key on your Roku remote to favorite a channel. Then just use the Channel Sorting Options panel on the left side of the screen to view only your favorite channels. Watch Now section. From the Live Guide, watch as I click back on my Roku remote to return to the primary navigation. And if you're watching Live TV, you can find this option by clicking Down. We're moving to the Watch Now section. This is DirecTV Stream's version of a home screen. It starts with the What's On Now section and Live TV recommendations. Take a look as I scroll to the right through the thumbnails, and there's a shortcut right back to the Live Guide. This is also where you'll find the Continue Watching section where you can pick up where you left off. But further down on the Watch Now screen, there's a Trending on Social section, Plus, you'll find the Set Your Cloud DVR area with recommendations for content to record. My Library, Cloud DVR. To the right of Watch Now is My Library. This is your Cloud DVR. I want to show you how to view your recordings, but first, let's talk about options to set those recordings in the first place. While watching live TV, I click Play Pause on my Roku remote. This menu appears on the bottom of the screen Arrow to the right and select the Record option. Now your recording options will vary depending on the program that you choose. In this case, I was able to record new episodes of a series. Now that's how to record something airing live. But to record something airing later on, go right back to the Live Guide. I touched on this in the previous section. Let's take a deeper dive. 
When you select a program that's airing later on, a screen will appear with the option to record it. Depending on the type of program, you can choose to record a single episode or an entire series. You can choose to record all episodes or new episodes. And for sports, you can choose to record a single game or record all games for that team. If you know exactly what you want to record, skip the guide. Use the search feature to quickly find a program or a game that you want to record. Just browsing where well, you can set recordings from the Watch Now, Sports, and On Demand sections. Watch as I click on a thumbnail from one of these sections and you can see the option to record the program. As long as you've got unlimited cloud DVR storage, it is better to set a recording than watching the On Demand content because you can skip the ads on programs in your DVR. Now let me take you back to the library tab to view your recordings. You see thumbnails for some recent recordings, and as I scroll to the right, there's a shortcut to All Recordings. From this section, you can view upcoming recordings, delete recordings, and see how much storage you have left. My account has unlimited DVR storage, but recordings expire after nine months. If you want to delete recordings anyway, you can select the trash can from this main DVR screen and all episodes will be deleted. For example, I selected Shark Tank and 25 episodes are gone. But to delete individual episodes, click through to a program, Law & Order in this case, and then from this program page, you can delete episodes one at a time using that same trash can icon. Playback features. There are a few additional features for playback that I want to share with you, so let me play a program to explain. When you press the play pause key on your Roku remote, more options will appear along the bottom of your screen. I showed you how to set a recording already, we'll skip that, but you also see options to pause, rewind, and fast forward. This works with live TV and recordings. Also, when you click play pause on a Roku, scroll to the far left for the information section, and here you can manage recordings or view on-demand episodes. Scroll to the far right on the play pause menu for the option to turn on closed captioning. While watching a program, click down to access the primary navigation menu. You can also click the up arrow while watching a program to view a list of recent channels. The left and right arrows are also useful with this service. Using a Roku device, you can arrow left and right while watching live TV to channel serve. Account settings. Follow me from the main navigation on a TV set to the account settings, and that's the gear icon to the far right. Click Preferences to adjust parental controls, close captioning, change the live guide sort order, and more. For example, here you can choose to display or hide live sports scores. And if you're having trouble with the account settings or really anything I've covered today from a TV set, you can always make changes from a web browser or the mobile app. Canceling DirecTV Stream. You will need to sign in from a web browser to cancel online. And after you log in from DirecTV Stream's website, select Account Overview and then Manage My Subscription. Next, click Cancel My Subscription and this screen will appear. As of this recording, DirecTV Stream still requires you to chat with a customer service representative to cancel. Thanks for watching.